Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and especially also for the invitation uh, to talk to you today. Um, I would like to uh, give some reflections and results of the global monitoring plan under the Stockholm Convention on POPs. Uh, many things have already been said and um, from that point I just want to start with you. It's not a legally binding regulation, but uh, there is an orientation for guidance which is laid down in a global monitoring plan in a document um, from uh, 2007, and then it has been amended and in a version of 2013, um, which should be available um, at www.popsint. I'm afraid that the lower lowest part of the <laughs> slide is not, uh, is not visible. Um, together with Jakob de Boer, uh, last year we have compiled a scientific uh, special issue for trends in analytical chemistry, which, which summarizes by many authors the different parts um, from the capacity building and of POPs um, in uh, the context of the Stockholm Convention. And if you're interested, please feel free uh, to read it. I'm also going to uh, present some of the data which have been there in the um, peer-reviewed literature um, on the projects which we have and um, they are available on, on our website um, from regional projects um, which we have conducted um, with funding from the Global Environment Facility and um, a project called SICAM, another initiative uh, in the different regions with regional reports and they are then supported by a large number of national reports that describe sampling sites, their analytic capacity um, training also contains um, uh, results from training workshops uh, which we have undertaken and um, wish to thank my project partners, um, CESIC in Barcelona, um, IVM, uh, Free University Amsterdam, MTM Eurobru, uh, many others, and of course also um, Rainer Malisch and his laboratory. Um, so, so the, uh, the uh, reports are available and um, accessible for download. Uh, I just want to uh, summarize first the results for POPs monitoring in air, which is one of these core matrices for the so-called effectiveness evaluation under the Stockholm Convention, which takes into account that global transport. And uh, we had this project um, covering 32 countries in four regions, the Latin American, Caribbean region, Africa, uh, the Pacific Islands, and the Pacific Islands region. What we have done is to expose polyurethane foams um, in different shapes and, um, and containers um, for three months in the region, then um, change the polyurethane foam and put a new in, so that for one year period we have got uh, four foams which then have been analyzed for these so-called quarterly samples. We reported them in uh, nanogram or picogram per polyurethane foam, uh, and but some um, of the expert then later on also convert them into volume masses using um, algorithms that have been developed by Tom Harner and uh, Jana Klavuna, Klavun, uh, Klavunova <laughs> at, at Ritz Talks. So, um, and these are just some sketches from the track publication from Christian Bogdal and co-workers that shows a um, PCDD, dioxin light PCB, in air in these polyurethane foams um, in the different regions. And um, you can see here that, uh, for example, um, in the Pacific Islands, which are extremely small islands with small populations, the uh, uh, smallest one is uh, Niue, with um, 1,800 inhabitants, and the largest is Fiji, with 1 million inhabitants, but stretched across um, 300 islands. So, poorly uh, populated, re very low concentrations, whereas in Latin America and in Africa, we sometimes find uh, quite high concentrations. On the left side, the bit darker brown is always the TEQ for, from dioxins, furans, and the lower one from the PCBs. Um, typically, you see that the dioxin-like PCB contribute less to the TEQ, uh, with the exemption from Cuba, where we have really one 
uh, concentration in La Havana that is through the roof um, based on the um, dioxin-like PCBs. We have a totally different feeling, uh, b uh, picture for the two perhaps most important industrial manufactured pops, the PCB as an industrial pop, um, which is here in the darker brown, and the DDT, the most important pesticide still used in um, in public health, in vector control, mainly against malaria. And then you see that there in these small, almost not populated Pacific Islands, the DDT concentrations are extremely high. We were very surprised to find that in one of the countries in the Solomon Island, it's still applied and uh, it's very high, but also in the others, Solomon Islands would be the country that is called SLB. Uh, but you also see that in other countries it's high, but also um, in the uh, in, the, uh, in, in Africa. In, in Latin America, here in the lower left, um, there's almost no PCBs, uh, no, no DDTs and metabolites um, in the air. Uh, what is present there is PCB, and that is, uh, once again, in Cuba, these extremely high concentrations. In Africa, we have a mixture. Sometimes the PCB are present, indicator PCBs, and sometimes uh, relatively low. These are the summaries, what we have found in these polyurethane forms. So for the pesticides, we had analyzed a total of 129, four per country. Uh, roughly, we have lost some of them in between. And you see that, for example, Myrex was not detected in 105 of these 129 samples. And also others like the, some of the heptachlors, um, there is quite 50% uh, of the samples had non-detects. Very often, and uh, perhaps look at the at the mean or the maximum uh, levels there, the, the the order of magnitude, the amplitudes are are very very different, and so the basically the DRINs and the DDTs are in the high high hundreds, whereas all the others are below 10, and then Myrex um, extremely low, and PCB the widest range. Um, over all of them. Dioxin furan, dioxin like PCB, can be well detected in almost all regions and countries. Uh, and the non availability of the five samples um, for the dioxin like PCB was due to an interference, a uh, bad cleaning uh, for, uh, of the polyurethane foams. Therefore, this does not mean that they are not present. This is the, um, the comparison of the results which uh, we had in our uh, UNEP studies, which were the uh, perhaps the newest uh, ones um, with exposures 2010, 2011, with other uh, studies. And it's quite interesting. It's in a logarithmic, uh, logarithmic scale um, to see how the distribution is um, in, the, in the different regions uh, in, in comparison with that for the indicator PCB here as PCB7. And um, it's, it's still several orders of magnitude what you, what you see in between here. We have to see between 1 and 1,000 uh, up to almost 10,000 uh, picogram per, per cubic meter. Um, for Once again, for the DDT, it's different, but it seems really that in Latin America, the DDT is also in other, stu uh, other studies not such a big of an issue um, as it is here, although it has been applied in uh, many of, of these countries, also especially in agriculture, uh, but at least it is not being manifested um, in the air. The, we also had um, some uh, of, the, of the samples and analyzed of the extracts for PBDEs uh, at, in the CESIC laboratory by Esteban Abad and his group uh, from the Latin American samples. I always use the ISO 3 codes for the, for the countries um, uh, over, over there. And you see that the PBD8, these eight congeners are those that are recommended for analysis um, in the uh, in the global monitoring plan, that they are all well detected also in smaller Pacific islands, like the first column is the Bahamas, Barbados, and then Cuba. And Cuba was extremely high in some for the PCBs, but for the PBDEs, um, there are more at the, at the lower end in comparison to that. It might be a bit surprising, and it's indicated that also in the Pacific Islands and very remote area that this modern industrial chemical is pretty present, and we find it uh, very often in air. Uh, that's ongoing research. I'm coming to human milk. 
and just a brief overview, and this has been talked about that, and um, the different areas. I just want to tell you one of these um, difficulties we had. The first round by um, WHO was in 87, 89, and it was mainly only uh, European and North American countries that participated. Then in the 1992-93 um, was uh, relatively similar uh, with, with the participation. Then the next round, when it became more global, uh, some other countries could be found interest, like, like Russia, China, um, uh, Brazil, Australia, but still absolutely nothing from the southern um, Asian countries and, and Africa. Fourth round, then came up a few of the, of the other countries. And then in the fifth round with the Stockholm Convention, now we are getting all the developing countries into that, also through funding and uh, through the obligations. That makes, of course, the, um, the comparison with earlier studies very, very different because we do not have the same. And in the next phase, which is started the call, we would really like to, um, to get together all the previous ones to come to some examples. You see that here in the regional distribution uh, by round and the different regions. Um, in the UN, we have that CEE, which is Central and Eastern Europe, and then the bit strange one, uh, VIOC, which is Western European and other groups that includes, of course, um, the, the EU countries, uh, but also North America, um, Canada, the United States, Australia, and, and New Zealand. And you see that we were very small, low in participation in the, in the latest rounds, 2008, 2012, and that makes a bit of a problem. We are still working, and Peter had mentioned that already, um, together with Rainer Malisch, um, to, to assess all that wealth of information, what we have in there from these national pools and samples. Just a short snapshot on the dioxin data uh, on TEQ basis for um, for the two th what was after two, uh, the year 2000. Uh, the advantage is that all these samples have been analyzed in the in the Freiburg uh, le uh, WHO and now also UNEP reference laboratory, so that we have have the data and it can be seen that in the darker the colors, the higher are the concentrations, and you can see. First of all, the different distribution uh, of the participating countries, but that in each of of the um, of, of the rounds there were some with relatively high concentrations, but they do not repeat. So we, we do not have, on a global level, a very good um, uh, picture on what has been done. We also still find some of these um, contaminants that has been mentioned before. This was mainly uh, by, uh, by the colleagues from, from the Netherlands with these uh, natural traditional clays. And um, this here shows the overview of the, the fifth round, so the 2008 to 2012, in terms of the POPs. And um, we had 30 national pools in these. And when you see for the DDTs, for first of all, that extremely high number of 23, almost 23,000. Um, nanogram per gram fat for the for the congeners that extremely wide amplitude between the the results all the others are much narrower uh, perhaps one or a maximum two orders of magnitude but here it is much higher up and also absolutely um, the highest the highest concentrations also the PCBs are are quite high um, on that this shows um, the distribution of the DDT samples um, from 78 countries from the different years, all of them, and um, together with Martin Vandenberg and WHO, on the basis of the data, uh, a so-called safety standard um, has been developed based on um, NOELs, on TDIs, um, and other regulatory issues. And for the DDTs, that would be at 2,300 nanogram DDTs per gram lipid, and that is this dotted line. And yet you see that at the end, some countries are above and some are extremely above them. And that might be perhaps a bit of the scary thought because all of these are quite, in brackets, are 
the years when these have been discovered. So until something like 2002, we thought 2200 in Hong Kong was the highest CDT concentration. But the more you look, the more you find. And it's always, um, you see, uh, it's different countries in different regions where we find still these surprises. And from that point of view, we, we know a lot. Perhaps we know certainly most about dioxins and furans. But for other uh, concentrations, other compounds is still some, some way to go and uh, we may have a large number of very low concentrations but also we cannot be sure of surprises. Having these safety standards, um, this has been uh, shown at the last conference of the parties, um, for which we have developed now for the TEQ based on the um, for dioxin-like compounds, for the sum of the PCBs and the sum of the DDTs, and um, and then the we have shown based on the. Um, on the pools we have and their results, the percentiles, and what you can see uh, from uh, from these data here is that for for the TEQ based on dioxin, furan, and dioxin like PCB, all mothers pools that we have analyzed, national pools, the minimum was 1.5, and the safety standard is something between 0.2 and 0.9. 100% of the mothers are above that safety level for human milk equivalent. For the PCBs, it would be 75% of all of them. And for the DDT that had the highest absolute number, it would be 5% of the mothers that, that, that are above. So that is really also, when we do an assessment, we have to take into, uh, into, uh, into account the relevance and the, the toxic effects and, uh, and, and their potencies, and not only the, the pure numbers. Of course, we have to consider with that, with the breastfeeding, that the in utero exposure is more important on the development and the effects of the, of the infant than the breastfeeding itself. We are making the arrangements for the second round, for, uh, or for the second phase, actually the sixth round of the WHO UNEP studies, and uh, we are continuing with the WHO guidelines with the reference laboratory. Uh, at the State Institute for Chemical and Veterinary Analysis for Food, and the perfluorinated chemicals are being analyzed by MTM Urebro uh, in, Swe in Sweden. We also count on the participation um, of the developed of the OECD countries that they contribute with their um, samples and send them uh, for the analysis for the developing countries. The Stockholm Convention Secretariat and UNEP, we have some funds so we can help them out. The last what I w briefly wanted to um, to bring to your attention is this interlaboratory assessment, which have been mentioned earlier. We have done now the second round, 2012-2013, are still busily analyzing, and these are the group of uh, of samples um, which we have distributed, and, uh, and and the matrices, and uh, you can see how many laboratories um, have submitted data uh, on, the, um, on the different compounds. The distribution of participating laboratories is such that many countries, these are the darker greens, only one laboratory per country participated. And fortunately, we're getting also the developing countries uh, into, into these exercises of quality and performance control. It is summarized in the table below, but Asia is very active. Uh, with Japan and China, um, but for example, they participated, uh, registered with 45 laboratories and 42 sent in um, results, so they really take it very seriously, whereas Africa, 12 showed interest, but only five then uh, submitted <laughs> results. Um, and uh, 25 laboratories from China participate uh, in, that, um, in that assessment. And the results in graphic sketch from the first round um, in um, 2010, 2011 are shown above there. And on the left hand, the for the uh, POPs pesticides and PCB, where it could be shown that for the different uh, matrices, something about 50% plus minus um, submitted satisfactory results, whereas for the different matrices or test sample types, for dioxins, furans, on basis of the total TEQ, um, the performance in general was better uh, for standard solutions, almost 100%. And, um, but um, for others, also higher. And now here in the, in the present study where we had more um, 
laboratories participating and also new compounds, um, the overall performance goes down um, a little bit and um, amazingly on standard solutions, the, the PFAS um, have been um, the best ones and uh, what I was very surprised is that for the dachshunds and furan uh, the fish was so poor. We have not seen that before and we have to really look into, <laughs> into these results which came as a very uh, big, uh, big surprise to us. Um, what we are using is that um, with the Z-scores and um, I would like to announce a final results workshop which we have planned for 24-25 June in Freiburg. The arrangements are not yet totally finished but those laboratories that have participated, I have informed about them uh, if they wish to participate in that. Uh, I'm showing you now some of the results um, where the between the dotted lines, the upper and the lower is plus two in Z score and the below is uh, uh, minus two in Z score. So that would be the sat satisfactory results. The labs are shown here. It always starts with Asia, which goes up to here. The blue, blue ones, this is the largest participation. Then comes those from the OECD countries, Europe and the rest of the um, Western countries up to here. Then comes a small group of Latin American countries, then a very small group of African countries, and finally four from um, Central and Eastern Europe. So that is Russia and Moldova, uh, which participated in that. And you see in general how it is being scattered, uh, that some laboratories have a problem even in a standard solution with that pesticide. Uh, for the indicator PCB in air, you see how the laboratories participated. So there are some of the Asian laboratories, but also some of the so-called industrialized um, Western European countries are quite <laughs> outside of what um, should have been done. We have to look into that if they used um, um, aerochlor patterns or something, calculations. I'm, I'm not sure, although we had it on the six uh, PCBs. For dachshunds and furans in general looks much better. And um, you see also that especially the, the Chinese and Japanese laboratories do very well, but also the two Russian laboratories at the end do, do very well about, about these. Um, the Moldovan lab had not participated in these. When we go to PBDE in fish, we also see big outlayers, and that's something to, to see perhaps if they um, use too aggressive um, cleanups or something like that. But you see that also that we are losing now um, the Latin Americans and the Africans. No country, no laboratory in these countries analyzes PBDEs at all. And it's also the same for when you have PFOS. So then we are losing also the Russian and the Central and Eastern European countries. So from that point of view, we still have large gaps in coverage of the bit more modern POPs, although they are all um, already uh, listed in the Stockholm Convention. The next plans are now uh, to continue these monitoring plans with analyses in the, in the different regions, and these are the participating countries um, with measurements for two years. Um, this is a scheme with uh, what will be analyzed in the polyurethane forms, always by twinning expert laboratories from Western countries with um, developing country laboratories uh, on these quarterly basis. Um, and, um, since you're also, also always asked, and, and that is also in the guideline, then what are the costs for the analysis and what are the recommended or preferred methods? We have put them together on the right column. Um, some numbers are a bit higher, um, so th that means that um, the, the costs are higher than it had been anticipated, but um, this is going... It's, I bring these numbers because they have been published in that, uh, in that guidance document with a uh, with the black numbers, not all of the compounds because some more have come through, but to give a bit more a clearer picture on that. And with that, I would like to thank all, all the donors and all the collaborators in the different uh, projects and you very much for your attention. Thank you, Heidi. Do we have any questions for Heidi? Is it training or equipment or what that causes these gross outliers for some of these?
countries. Um, I mean, I, I must say we have been to totally overwhelmed uh, by the uh, by the flood of data which we had. It's a, it's a, when you put put them up, it's about uh, something like 80, 90 congeners that have to have to be analyzed, and um, it and we have really to go into some of these. Um, uh, Underlying factors, we have asked for reporting, columns clean up, and, and methodology. But it's also, and, and especially for the uh, for the POPs pesticides, and, and for PFOS and PBDEs. And that is what was mentioned this morning um, with Peter first. Uh, we would like to qualify them for upper bound and lower bound, but these are not used to be. When I'm asking for six, PBD, uh, for six DDTs to be analyzed, the OP prime, DDT, DDE, and DDT, DDD. When one laboratory only gives me three results and the others they don't analyze, it gives me a problem to, uh, to assign a Z score for the sum, which was our qualifying parameter. This does not explain the large outlay in, in DL drain, for example, but for the drains, that would be a problem. And also with the PBDEs, we are requesting eight to be analyzed, but if, if they don't give the full sum, so they they lose, and uh, and especially those laboratories, and, and then we come to a real big problem when there is a good laboratory that analyzes all of them, but the majority, due to the assessment um, with the Z-scores, only analyzes less than they are higher than all the others, and they are creating themselves an outlier, and that takes a very long um, process of evaluation, and openly we are still plowing through. So these are the preliminary results <laughs> with the status <laughs> from last week. Um, it, it might change, but we have to look into some of these issues. But some have, of course, what we had seen before, the fat determination still is a big problem um, with, the, with the different ones, because it's not really defined which fat is, is a basis on the normalization, and uh, this is a, a, a major major issue. Some is also um, maybe maybe errors with. Um, we had sent all the samples back, all the results back for correction, um, because they had to report. The reporting units might be a bit unusual, but so that had been uh, that had been corrected. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's still some that are are not so so satisfactory. Of course, it also gives when one sees these Z scores um, to say already above three, a laboratory is not qualified when others have 50 or 80 or something like that. I think one has to to rethink the scheme. Uh, one Z is 12.5% in our assessments. Can I try one more? Why isn't South Africa represented in a lot of that data? I mean, they have to be more industrialized than those other nations that you're looking at. That's th this, this is a bit problematic. We had uh, in the interlaboratory um, assessment, um, there uh, South Africa is represented with one or two laboratories. It depends on the on, on, on the round. Otherwise, politically, I have not got uh, a commitment letter that uh, that the country would join uh, the project. So I, at a certain point, I have to to close the book, who is committed now and working will obtain the funding and they, they have not achieved. So it's a more a political than a scientific interest, but I have to, to go with official government commitments. Yeah, no, they, they say they have not used it, but they maintain, retain the rights to use it, and especially to the border, border of, uh, of Botswana and, um, and, and Mozambique, they have problems and outbreaks, some of them, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, this is one of my other headaches, is um, the, the PCB and dioxin inventories, what's it still, uh, and, and DDT inventory, what's still around and who is using, and then also with official registers, it is, it is not easy to to get really the information how much it has been used. But for example, what we could see, uh, Ethiopia is that country with this extremely high mother's milk. In the air, we do not find. Ethiopia is not one of the highest countries in, in the air. On the other hand, the Solomon Islands, they use it. We have it in the mothers and we have it in air. So sometimes it matches and sometimes it does not match, but one has to go then more into the sampling sites and also in the sampled mothers. 
this, this is a problem. Officially, it is used only for indoor residual spraying DDT. That is the only permitted use of DDT. So that means otherwise they are not in, not in compliance. And okay. No more questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Heidi. Thank you.